on a previous episode of Shadow Realm. It is time to plan a strategy. An army of my own? <laughs> At your service. We're all ready. You really came up with that plan like a born general. I too have descended from the old world tribes. I had to face Ravan himself. At the call of the leopard, the Vonners began to stir. I was already awake. It's time. We must head down to the dark side. Lock your arms around my shoulders and get on my back. Hold tight. I will use my tail to grab branches as leverage when I swing down through the rocks. Let's do this. And so we began our descent. Slowly, they swerved down the rocks and thin shrubbery, careful not to screech as the thorny branches pierced through their hands and tails. Shrub by shrub, rock by rock, they veered downwards until they finally arrived at the outskirts of Lanka. An observant eye would have noticed that this slope was more thickly wooded than it had been the previous day. But observing things was not the Rakshas's forte. I ducked behind a large rock while Chimpu, Ranga, and Raja all spread out along the canyon walls, also positioning themselves behind smatterings of rock that hid them from immediate view. The other Vonners hid behind tree stumps and spread themselves out to cover the walls of the canyons. The monkeys stayed further up slope, ready with their slingshots. Before us was 400 yards of putrid wasteland which smelt like decaying meat. It was swarming with red-eyed rakshasas, oozing yellow pus and dripping blood from their fangs and talons. They had spent the night preparing for the ritual burning of the book. The funeral stake was a massive pile of dead wood, laden with ghastly-looking bones, droppings, and foul-smelling flesh of jungle animals. It was built upon an island surrounded by odiferous green marsh and flying rakshasas. Are you ready? To be the first human to try bungee jumping without the cord? No. What's the matter? Listen, I haven't told anyone this, but I've been having this recurring nightmare where I'm falling into an abyss. What if that dream was about this moment? What if I tried to plavang, but instead I fall? Remember, we're both descended from old world tribes. If my people can plavang, then yours can too. Has there ever been another descendant of Old World tribes who has been known to plavan like Hanuman? Not that I know of, no. But then again, you're no ordinary descendant. Reawaken your muscle memory, Arya Veer. Use your limbs in the way your forefathers did. The rest of us will wait, watch, and then follow. I closed my eyes. Once again, I dug deep into my being, seeking the energy tunnel that would take me to my storehouse of Brahman Shakti. But something was different. The storehouse, it was deeper. And the deeper I went into it, the more I was able to muster. A brilliant light burst out of my body, blue at its core, white on the outside, with rainbow-colored rays reverberating from its edges into the Rakshas-scented air. My skin glistened with the essence of creation energy. I was no longer that adolescent boy from San Francisco. I was a warrior. I was my true self. The Rakshasas turned all at once to stare aghast at this rainbow light emanating from behind the rock. As I stepped forward onto an air cushion, they erupted into a torrent of barbaric chaos.
A handful of ogre Rakshasas charged towards me. I took a few steps back, readied myself, and leapt out into the air. I did it! In one single leap, I was on a rock island in the marsh, a few hundred feet away. But I was surrounded by snake rakshasas who rushed toward me spitting venom from their fangs. So I leapt again. Woohoo! More snakes, more ogres caught sight of me on another rock island. So I leapt again. I continued this way from island to island, getting closer and closer to the funeral pyre. The rest of the Vonners began mimicking my actions exactly. <laughs> Within moments, the marshes of Lanka were transformed into a circus of Vonner acrobats, confusing the Rakshasas by making them bolt in every direction. Then, a host of tree stumps fell to the floor and began tumbling down the side of the mountain to reveal an army of monkeys, all strategically positioned down the hillside. The Rakshasas bumped and heaved into one another to avoid the tree missiles headed towards them. Whoa! Swami Shakespeare is a genius! Oh no! Raja! <laughs> Snake Rakshasas had captured him. They had wrapped themselves tightly around his torso and were squeezing the life out of him, stretching him from limb to limb. An ogre Rakshas was approaching with a large boulder. I had to do something fast! I plovunged. Only this time I used the full momentum from the upswing to snatch Raja away from the grasp of the demons, high up into the air with me. <clears throat> I set him down near Chimpu and continued forward, towards the funeral pyre. Thank you, Arya the Brave. I landed on a rock island, finally away from the danger. Or so I thought. Suddenly, I found myself faced with an onslaught of flying Rakshasas, approaching from all sides. I was trapped. Anywhere I leapt, I would be jumping headlong into their jaws. Patar! <laughs> On cue, the Varners threw stones and pebbles to blind the flying Rakshasas mid-flight. The long-beaked Rakshasas fell to the swamps below, the grimy stickiness oozing from the marshes lodged into their wing spokes. The weight of the slime stopped them from elevating back up into the air. Within moments, they sank into a marshy floor sucked in by the force of the swamp. Down here! My army began hurtling pebbles and stones at the other Rakshasas. Many grabbed clumps of loose soil, which they released into the air. Lanka was filled with a dust storm that blinded the demons. I couldn't believe it. The plan was working. I was getting closer and closer. The funeral pyre was just within my reach. And then, I felt a cold shiver up my spine as the sky grew darker. Fire. Set it on fire. It could only be Ravan. The funeral stake was lit. With the deepest breath that my lungs would allow, I bounded onto the stake and quickly snatched up the book. I put it in my quiver and sealed the latch tight. 
I positioned my bow and prepared to string my golden arrow. <laughs> Ravan had succeeded in getting me right where he'd wanted. Here, in the middle of the funeral pyre, he intended to burn me along with the troubled epic. Or so he thought. The flames crept up to lick the outskirts of the aura of rainbow energy that had encircled me, but they couldn't come near me. The epic and I were safe, but the Vonners were not. Retreat to the upper side! We can't leave you! I said retreat! Now! My eyes were blazing with the energy of Brahman Shakti, and Chimpu knew he had to obey. On his command, the Vonners scampered off one by one up the hillside. But one Vonner stayed. He was leaping around the canyon in a frenzy, surrounded by Rakshasas who lashed at him with clubbed limbs and forked tongues. He avoided them easily with precise movements, deftly leaping out of their way at the moment they struck and smiling back at them mischievously. He had the look of a mature army general, wizened from years of military practice. But I don't remember meeting him. The lone Vanur became ensnared in flames. His tail was set ablaze. I reached out to help, but he turned to me, calmly, and joined his hands together in a namaste. In that moment, he looked regal, celestial almost. He wasn't in pain. With a wave of his paw, he leapfrogged sideways, taking the fire with him. And then it hit me. It was Hanuman. He had come after all. He too was endowed with the Agniyastra. He used his tail to set fire to Lanka. As he leapt from hillock to hillock, Lanka went up in flames. The Rakshasas, terror-stricken by the intensity of the fire, began to flee in every direction. Thank you for listening to Shadow Realm. If you enjoyed today's episode, share it with someone who'd love to journey through the Aria Chronicles. Visit theariachronicles.com for more information. Be sure to rate and review us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Coming up on Shadow Realm. Ravan can be whatever he wants to be. Then, my eyes fell upon the last Ravan. A thin, wiry creature in a black hooded cloak. Stay tuned for more.